Namam Shri Guru Vaishnavamscha Shri Rupam Sadrajatam Sadhana Raghunatan Vitam Tam Sajivam <coughs> Sadvaitam Sagadhutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan <coughs> Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakan Vitamscha Om Jnana Timirandasya Jnana Anjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha <coughs> Mukam Kuroti Vachalam Pangum Langayate Girim Yat Kripa Tamaham Bande Shri Gurun Dinatadana <coughs> Vancha Kalpataru Vyascha Kripa Sindhu Vyayevacha Patitanam Pavanebhyo Vaishnavebhyo Namo Namaha Namo Mahavadanaya Krishna Prema Pradayate Krishnaya Krishna Chaitanya Namne Gaudati Shenama <coughs> Nityanandam Namastubhyam Premananda Pradayane Kalo Kalamashanashaya Janava Pataye Namaha Panchatatvatmakam Krishnam Bhakta Rupa Swarupakam Bhakta Vataram Bhaktakyam Namami Bhakta Shaktikam He Krishna Karna Sindho Dina Bandho Jagatapate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostate Tapta Kanshana Gaurangi Radhe Brindavaneshwari Vrishabhanu Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Priye <coughs> Jayatam Shrutopangor Mama Mandamate Rakati Matsarvasva Padam Bojo Radha Madana Mohano Divyad Vrindaranya Kalpadrumadha Srimad Ratnagara Singhasana Sto Srimad Radha Srila Govinda Devo Prishtalibhi Sevyamano Smarami Srimad Rasarasarambhi Vam Srivata Tatakstitaha Karshan Venu Sunair Gopir Gopinata Shriestunaha Bhaktya Vihina Aparadha Lakshai Kshiptascha Kamari Tarangamadye Kripa Maitvam Sharanam Prapanna <coughs> Brinde Numaste Charanaravindam Brinde Numaste Charanaravindam Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar, Shivas Adi Go Bhakta Vrinda. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare. First of all, I'm offering my unlimited dandavat pranams and my shraddha pushpanjali at the lotus feet of my most worshipable, beloved Gurudev, Nitya Lila Pravishta Om Vishnupad, Paramahansa Astu Tarashata, Sri Srila A.C. Bhaktivedanta, Swami Maharaj Srila Prabhupada. Then I'm offering my same unlimited dandavat pranams 
And my Shraddha Pushpanjali at the lotus feet of my most worshipable beloved Siksha Gurudevs. Nityalila Pravishto Vishnu Pad Paramahansa Astatara Sata Sri Shila Bhakti Rakshak Sridhar Goswami Maharaj and Nitya Lila Pravishta Om Vishnu Pad Paramahansa Asto Tarasata Sri Shila Bhakti Vedanta Narayan Goswami Maharaj <coughs> I'm offering my Dandavat Pranams at the lotus feet of all of my Sri Sri Rupa Nuga Guru Varada and my Dandavat Pranams to all of the Vaishnavas and all of the Vaishnavas. So we're continuing with our reading of Sri Vilapa Kusumanjali by Srila Rabbanath Das Goswami. And we have read the sixth verse, which is composed by Rabbanath Das Goswami to pay his obeisances to the lotus feet of Srila Sanatan Goswami. And we read somewhat into the purport. We still have a couple of pages, a few pages left to complete Srila Gurudev's commentary on this verse. Prabhu will accomplish that this evening. <clears throat> so I'm again reading that verse, verse number six. <clears throat> The light okay? It's okay. Vairagya yug bhakti rasam prayat nair apayayan maam anabip samandham kripam budhir yak paradukka dukki sanatana stam prabham ashrayam. I was unwilling to drink the nectar of bhakti ras flavored with renunciation, but out of his causeless mercy, Sanatan Goswami made me drink, even though I was unwilling. Therefore, he is an ocean of mercy. He is compassionate to fallen souls like me. I offer my respectful obeisances unto his lotus feet. <coughs> so we were reading into the purport how Srila Sanatana Goswami always had a very loving concern for Srila Raghunath Das Goswami like elder brother and also Rupa Goswami had that uh, mood towards him. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu actually told them both that you should accept Raghunath Das as your brother. So uh, we know, we heard how Srila Raghunath Das Goswami was actually saved by the both of them when he first came to Vrindavan from Jagannath Puri and how he had the plan to to leave his body uh, by jumping from Govardhan Hill and committing suicide. So, actually, he, f he felt there was no way that he could remain in this world. Because who had left this world? Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He had left. We cannot even begin to imagine how devastating this would be for such a personality as Sri Raghunath Das Goswami. And also Srila Suruk Damodar Goswami had left. 
So Srila Raghunath Das Goswami found no more shelter. He could not tolerate. And therefore he had this plan that since Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has offered me to Govardhan, how did he offer Raghunath Das Goswami to Govardhan? Yes. Sri yeah. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had a Govardhan Shila that was brought from Vrindavan by one of his devotees. And Mahaprabhu for more than two months was constantly doing the highest Prem Seva to this Govardhan Shila. His, uh, his Prem Seva was to bathe this Giriraj Govardhan in his own tears. And Mahaprabhu considered that this is Krishna himself. Uh, this Giriraj Shila is Krishna himself. And he was also continuously touching the Shila to his heart, to his head. And in this way, he had this connection with this Govardhan Shila. And then one day, he presented this Shila to Raghunath Das Goswami. Um, that Shila is supposed to be on the altar at the Sri Radha Gokulananda Temple in Vrindavan. I don't know if it is the original Shila or not. They say it is, but we can't know for sure where they've told. So, in this way, Raghunath Das Goswami was feeling himself to be entirely bereft, and therefore he thought, I will simply go, and since he has, he has given me to Govardhan, so I will end my life there. And then we heard how Sanatan Goswami gave him new hope and also told him about his own experience. Right? <clears throat> when he got the, the sores, the itching, oozing sores by traveling through Janikanda forest and drinking the water. And when Mahaprabhu would see Sanatan Goswami in Puri, he would embrace him. And the oozing pus from the sores would come on his body. And Sanatan, uh, Raghunath Das Goswami, I mean, Sanatan Goswami thought he could not tolerate this. So he made a plan. He didn't tell this to Mahaprabhu, but he made a plan to end his life. Huh? What good is this body if I am always committing offenses to Mahaprabhu? And so his plan was to throw himself underneath the wheels of the Jagannath cart and end his life. And Mahaprabhu, who knows everything in everyone's heart, he told him, you know, you are, you are, you have given your body to me. You have surrendered. Is it right that you should take something back that you have given to me? This body is no longer yours. Uh, I have many things I want to accomplish through your body. So, and furthermore, if you think that simply by uh, committing suicide that you can attain Krishna, you are wrong. Uh, if that was the truth, if that was the case, I would commit suicide hundreds and thousands of times. I can attain Krishna through that. So in this way, he encouraged Sanatana Goswami, and Sanatana Goswami related the same pastime to Raghunath Das Goswami. And in that way, he calmed him. But more than that, uh, Srila Bhakti Rakshak Sridhar Maharaj, he tells in a very nice way how when Raghunath Das Goswami came, from Puri to Vrindavan. You know, he was feeling so much pain and suffering in his heart that Mahaprabhu had left. 
But when he met Rupa and Sanatan, and they began to take him under their shelter and they began to nourish him with the nectar that they were writing, because they had been sent to Vrindavan by Mahaprabhu while he was even on the planet. And they were most of the time not in his personal presence for years. But yet when he came there, uh, the way Srila Sridhar Maharaj puts it is that he now found that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had not really left. He's living like anything in Rupa and Sanatana. So they actually took him in and they nourished him. And Sanatana Goswami in particular, he uh, had a very uh, brotherly and protective mood toward Raghunath Das. So Sanatana Goswami was doing parikrama of Govardhan every day. And then he would come to Radha Kund and then he would come and meet with Raghunath Das Goswami. So Raghunath Das Goswami concluded, he, he understood that actually Sanatan Goswami, he's perfected, he does not need to do Govardhan Parikram every day, but he's doing this to look after me. He would come and visit. So, <clears throat> similarly, Raghunath Das Goswami is saying, that you are coming here now and then only to see how this orphaned boy is doing. You are coming to tell me the pastimes of Krishna and to teach me how to serve him. So such was his mood. Now the next section is titled Sanatan Goswami's Loving Concern. <coughs> Sri Sanatan Goswami's concern for Sri Raghunath Das Goswami was displayed in the following pastime. Once, Raghunath Das Goswami was sitting under the open sky and he was performing bhajan on the banks of Shama Kunda. Two tigers approached the Kunda, drank water, and then went away. Sanatan Goswami was watching this from a distance and he became concerned. He approached Raghunath Das Goswami and he instructed, O oh, Raghunath, you should not sit here like this. I will build a hut for you and by my special order you should live there and you should perform your bhajan there. So Raghunath Das Goswami could not refuse his order. Sanatan Goswami made a hut, and from that time Raghunath Das Goswami lived there, chanted Harinam, and performed all other devotional activities. Even though Rup and Sanatan, especially Sanatan Goswami, used to see Raghunath Das Goswami as their younger brother, he always saw them as his gurus. So being the direct disciples of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Sanatan Goswami, Rupa Goswami, and Raghunath Das Goswami were all God brothers. And therefore Sanatan and Rupa Goswami saw Raghunath Das as their God brother, never as their disciple. But he never saw them as God brothers. He always saw them as his gurus. And here's a quote from the Madhyalila, Chaitan Jaratamrita. Gurur kinkara hoy manya se amar. The servant of Guru is very respectable for us. Now, this is a statement by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. When Govinda came and met Mahaprabhu in Puri, he told him, our Gurudev Ishwara Puripad has sent me to serve you. So, Ishwara Puri is the guru of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and also he's the guru of Govinda. Uh, and 
Generally, Mahaprabhu would not accept service from his godbrother. But because Ishwara Puri had ordered him, uh, had ordered Govinda to come to uh, Jagannath Puri and serve Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Uh, so therefore, Mahaprabhu had to accept because it was the order of their guru. <clears throat> so, this, is, this statement by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu that Guru Kinkar Hoi Manya Se Amar that means that the servant of Guru, uh, the Kinkar of Guru, Manya Se Amar is very, very respect, respectable for us. We must respect always the servant of Guru. So, when uh, Govinda came and, Mahap and, and met Mahaprabhu in Puri, he told him, Our Guru Dev, Ishwar Puripada has sent me to serve you. And Mahaprabhu was thinking, how can this be? He is my god brother, and therefore I should respect him. But he wants to serve me. His Guru had ordered that Govinda should serve him, and therefore he accepted it. <clears throat> the Guru Sevak, the servant of the Guru, should be deeply respected. So understanding this, Raghunath Das Goswami always saw Sanatan and Rupa Goswami as his Gurus. We should also have this behavior amongst ourselves, for that will create love between us. If we think, I am Guru, he knows nothing, he is not as good a servant of our Guru Dev as I am, he doesn't even know any Siddhanta, then there will be quarrels amongst us. Now this is going on. I am the only Acharya and no one else is qualified. Where there is hating and similar mentalities, that place is Kali Rajya, the kingdom of Kali. <clears throat> now Gurudev is quoting from the verse, the words Vairagya Yoga Bhakti. There are two types of bhakti. One is general and the other is bhakti with vairagya. Here the word vairagya has two meanings. Vishesha rupena rag. That's one meaning. This means uh, special rag or special anurag. This is the distinguishing feature of vairagya is rag or anurag. This is a most important point. So what is rag? Or ra anurag? Attachment? Yes. That is like a general uh, definition of the word. Rag, anurag. So... Vairagya, right? What is the meaning of the word vairagya? It has the word rag in it. Detachment. Mm -hmm. Detachment. Mm -hmm. but in that case, how does the word rag apply? It's, it's... What kind of rag is it? Vairag, vai means without. Or it can also mean with. <laughs> we'll see how this is given two different definitions of vairagya. So in, you know, the word raga is also used in the, in the mundane uh, sense. Material attachment. Material attachment is also called rag. Yes. Just like calm, material lust is called calm, but transcendental lust is called calm. But Krishna's name is Kamadev. You see, 
So also in the context of the word vairagya, uh, it means renunciation, vairagya, without attachment, renouncing. But also in Sanskrit, the, the prefix vai and rag, ragya, can mean, now Gurde is explaining, when anurag, uh, when great absorption and affection for Krishna is present, no asakti or attachment for sense objects can remain. Not possible. You can't have both. This is the Haribhasha definition of vairagya. Because as Gurudev said, one, there's two types of bhakti. Vairagya yug bhakti are the words used by Sanatan, by Raghunath Das Goswami in his prayer to Sanatan Goswami. Vairagya yug bhakti, rasam prayatnaya, vairagya. It begins with that word. So, the one definition, or the, the one type of bhakti, is general, and the other type of bhakti is vairagya. Now here the word vairagya has two meanings. Vishesha rupena rag. This means special rag or anurag. And that in this case also means attachment. Special attachment. The distinguishing feature of vairagya is raga or anuraga. This is the most important point. When anurag, when great absorption and affection for Krishna is present, no asakti or attachment for sense objects can remain. When there's what? Great absorption and affection for Krishna, then what cannot remain? No attachments and affection for material objects. Yes. Yes. So, this is the paribhasha, the definition of vairagya. Externally, we will see that one truly fixed in vairagya will have asakti only in bhakti. Asakti also means attachment. Uh, only He will have asakti only in bhakti and in the service of Radha and Krishna. So Gurudev is saying, we'll observe this. Externally, we will see that one truly fixed in vairagya will have asakti only in bhakti and in the service of Radha and Krishna. One who has this special anurag for Radhika's service will automatically leave all worldly attachments. What will happen to a person who has this kind of special anurag for Radhika's service? They will leave all worldly attachments. And it will happen automatically. Right? Automatically. So, those who have not developed real vairagya, they may leave their worldly attachments, but after some time they will again become immersed in those things. Srila Raghunath Das Goswami has this special attachment to the service of Radha and Krishna and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He has this very special attachment and he glorifies Sri Sanatan Goswami as the one who blessed him with this Vairagya Yoga Bhakti. So, in the translation it says, Vairagya Yoga Bhakti Rasam. That means that special type of bhakti and that special type of bhakti ras that is mixed with vairagya and that context with renunciation, right? So, yes, so Srila Raghunath Das Goswami has this special attachment to the service of Radha and Krishna and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And he glorifies Sri Sanatan Goswami as the one who blessed him with this Vairagya Yoga.
bhakti. And you know, he's saying in the verse, uh, Sanatana Goswami is the one who forced me to drink this special kind of bhakti rasa mixed with vairagya, mixed with renunciation, right? And he says, I was blind. I was unwilling to drink. The Sanatana Goswami forced me to drink this. So, in Chaitanya, in Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's own life also, we see Vairagya Yuga Bhakti. Yug means like yoga, yug. It means with, connected with. Vairagya Yug Bhakti. It means bhakti connected with Vairagya. So in Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's own life also, we see Vairagya Yug Bhakti. When he sees his followers performing bhakti with vairagya, he is so pleased. He desires that every one of his devotees should be a kinshan, miskinshan. That is, having Krishna as one's only possession. This is, Mahaprabhu likes to see this in his devotees, uh, that they have this mood of a kinjan, that I have nothing in this world except for Krishna. Yeah. Didn't Queen Kunti pray like that also? In, in which way? In Srimad Bhagavatam, yeah. that uh, you are uh, the property of those that have are materially impoverished? Yes, she did. A kinjan of Gochara, that's the word she used. You are you, you are the, the gochara, you are the uh, protector of your devotees who have nothing. They're a kinjana in this world. But this doesn't necessarily mean that they have no material possessions at all. They may even have, they may even be wealthy. But the akinshana mood is so deep within them. They're absolutely, they have no attachment for anything. They have no sense of possessor, possessorship because they see Krishna as their only possession. You see? So, yes, Queen Kunti told that. That was a very good lesson for us in the early days. Actually, the term was materially exhausted. <laughs> we qualified <laughs> to some extent in that regard. Mm. Yes. So, Mahaprabhu is so pleased when he sees his followers performing bhakti with vairagya. He desires that every one of his devotees should be a kinshana, niskinshana, that is, having Krishna as one's only possession. We are not like this, and therefore we have so many problems. Because why? Because we don't see Krishna as our only possession. So we have so many problems. If we maintain any attachment for anything other than Krishna, to name, either to name and fame, wealth, women, or food, then bhakti will become very remote for us. Very, very remote. So, this is something that's a challenge, right? Because in the material world, we are naturally attracted and we become attached to things, persons and so forth, places, all of these things, we become attached to them. Uh, but actually, if we want bhakti, we cannot have bhakti and that attachment at the same time. Sure, Prabhupada would give an example. If you have something in your hand, yeah. you have to throw it away. Before you can pick another pick thing up. up. Yes. yes. There's actually a little 
story that illustrates that. There's a way in India that monkeys are captured. There's a particular way that they use to capture monkeys. Because, you know, monkeys are always sneaking in and stealing things, especially food. They steal like a potato or something and they hold on to it. <laughs> so there's one way that they that they um, capture a monkey. You know, the pot, there's a pot, and it has, like, the top of the pot, the opening of the pot. I guess you call that the mouth of the pot. You know, it's somewhat narrow. But it's big enough that a monkey can stick its hand into the pot. And what they do is they put either a, a big potato or a big apple or whatever in the pot to lure the monkey to come and stick his hand in and steal it, right? So the monkey uh, sees in the pot, and he sticks his hand in, and then he tries to pull his hand out. But because he's holding on to this bigger object, it won't come out. And that's how they capture the monkey. The monkey won't let go of it. <laughs> yes. You see? So... In the same way, if we want to, but there's another example of two boats. You cannot put your feet on two boats at the same time and ride on both boats at the same time. Maybe for some short time you can balance like that, but ultimately you can't. So, yes, so... Gurudev is saying, if we maintain any attachment for anything other than Krishna, or to, to name and fame, or to wealth, or to women, or food, then bhakti will become very remote for us. Very, very remote. <clears throat> a, complete <clears throat> a complete day and night is eight praharas. So, there are eight time divisions, eight praharas. And one prahara, three hours, consists of six or seven danda. So, here's two different terms that we're learning. So, there are eight praharas in a complete day and night. That means in 24 hours. So, if you divide that... By eight, 24 by 8, then you get 3. So, and one prahara, 3 hours, consists of 6 or 7 danda. So, you have to divide that 3 hours into 6 or 7. Our Goswamis spent 4 danda, that is, about 1 and a half to 2 hours on ahar nidra, eating, drinking, and sleeping. That's it. In a 24-hour period, one and a half to two hours, eating, drinking, and sleeping. They spent the rest of the day and night over seven and a half prahara in ashtakaliya lila smaran remembering the eightfold daily pastimes of Radha and Krishna, day and night. Moreover, there were some days when they neglected to eat or sleep at all. We sleep from eight to nine hours daily. Then so much time is spent in oil massage, bathing, roaming here and there, general laziness, sitting and thinking. The rest of the day passes as we talk about things other than Harikata. Then sometimes we feel sick, and at that time doctors must be brought and medicine administered. Our whole time goes in vain. Certainly, this is a situation of great distress. So, we hope because Gurudev told us, don't become hopeless. Mm -hmm. So, 
This is the case, like I was saying yesterday, about how a man is judged by his ideal. You see? So we have to nurture this kind of ideal and very great humility and shame also. Uh, and then those personalities can be merciful upon us and everything will be arranged that one day, one day in any lifetime, we'll be able to follow in the actual footsteps of the six Goswamis in the footsteps of Raghunath Das Goswami. Gurudev told us, he said, in, in one life you will have to follow and do the bhajan that Raghunath Das Goswami has done. So this is very, very rare in this world. But we shouldn't think that without work and very, very great sacrifice and earnest praying and begging that this will come. It will, won't come without that. Uh, there must be this mood. So in the beginning, we can't imitate that, of course. The, the imitation is not beneficial. If we think, I'm going to be like Raghunath Das Goswami, or just like, you know, on the disappearance day of Srila Gorky Shordas Babaji Maharaj, the last Kartik, uh, the last Akadasi day of Kartik, we read so many different pastimes about Srila Gorky Shordas Babaji. And, you know, there was one person who was younger, and he wanted to be a Babaji like, like, uh, <clears throat> like Gorky Shardas Babaji Maharaj. So he made a hut nearby to him. And so then he was doing and trying to do so many uh, Harinam Japa, you know, one lakh, two lakhs, like this. And then he would also sometimes be crying out very loudly. See? So Srila Gorky Shordas Babaji was asked about that. Babaji, whether or not he had become quite advanced, uh, he's feeling these emotions. So you know what Gorky Shordas Babaji Maharaj replied? He said, if a young woman who has just gotten married wants to have a child, and she sees that other women who have, who are giving birth to their children go into a room, and that's their birth room where they stay while the child is coming out of their womb. And during that time, and even prior to that time, the woman is uh, giving out cries of pain because so much pain is coming prior to the birth, right? And she's making so many different sounds. So if this young girl thinks, oh, I also want a baby, so I will also go into a room and I'll make these sounds and then baby will come, see? Obviously, this will not happen. So Gorky Shordas Babaji Maharaj told this example. He told this. He said that that young girl will have to understand that yes, certainly she can have a baby, but first she has to be married and she has to meet with her husband and then after some time she'll become pregnant and after nine months then a child may come, right? It will not happen without that. So Gorky Shordas Babaji Maharaj was saying, simply by imitating hmm, the bhajan and the moods of a Mahabhagavad Vaishnava, uh, this will not be beneficial. Imitation is not beneficial. What is beneficial, because the term used for imitation is called anukarana. Anukarana, to imitate. But there's another term called anusarana. And the anusarana means to follow. If you try to follow 
and emulate and try to take their moods within our heart like this in a genuine, truthful, and honest way, right? And anusarana is what we hope to do. That's why we can sing these songs. For example, Naratam Das Thakur's song, Goranga Bolite Habe, where he's, he's very deeply praying and feeling very great um, intense desire <clears throat> that when will that day come? Right? When will that day come? Goranga Bolite Habe, Kulaka Shabir. That when I chant the name of Goranga, then my hairs will stand on end in ecstasy. Hari Hari Bolite, Nayane Bahe Mir, Bahe Mir. And then when I chant Hari Hari, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, then Tears will come like streams from my eyes. Arkabe nitai chander karna hoibe. And when will Sri Nitai Chand, the moon like Nityananda Prabhu, when he'll when will he be merciful to me? Karuna hoibe. Karuna hoibe. At that time, when Nitai bestows his mercy, and when will I feel samsara vasana mor kave tuchave? Samsara vasana means <clears throat> my, my attachment to this samsara. And vasana also means desires. My, when will my samsara vasana my desires to remain in the samsara, when will they become tucha, insignificant? That's what Gurudev is saying here. That will have to come. So Narutam Das Thakur is praying when. Gurudev one time at a festival, he would ask from time to time that some devotee will stand and tell the translation to that song. Goranga Bolite Habe. And uh, <coughs> Gurudev would say, in this song is the most important word in the Vaishnava vocabulary. Which word? God. When. When. Mm. Habe. Mm. Also, Shil Bhakti Thakur, he wrote a song. Kabe Habe Bolo Seidin Amar. Oh, please tell me, when will that day be mine? When will that day be mine? That the mercy of Nityananda Prabhu comes to me. And all of my material desires become insignificant. So like this, uh, it's necessary to follow and not to imitate. Then we can make genuine progress. Otherwise, the cheating mentality comes, you know, nishkapatya. Kapatya means deceitfulness, to deceive. Kapatya, that you pose as if you are something. Uh, but nishkapatya means uh, without any duplicity. Nishkapatya. So we want to become like that. So here Gurudev is describing how the six Goswamis lived and how, he, and how we live. He's drawing the comparison. <laughs> we sleep so much, we eat so much, we get oil massage, we bathing. All of our time passes, and we th we talk about things other than Harikata. Sometimes we become sick, then medicine is brought, doctors are brought. Our whole time goes in vain. Certainly this is a situation of great distress. So we should feel that, 
You know, I'll tell you. I remember Guru Dave. This just came to my memory that in Navadvik Dham, uh, during the Navadvik Dham Parikrama, Shri Guru Dave had his room and Shri Maharaj had his room. And devotees would circumambulate. There was a way to go around both rooms. So after Mangalarti, many devotees would be chanting their japa and circumambulating the room. And so Gurudev would usually be sitting on his bed. It was just around the time when light came in the morning. And Gurudev would be sitting underneath the mosquito net, because still there's a few mosquitoes around. So <clears throat> Gurudev was sitting, and I came, and I paid my obeisances. Maybe there was a couple of other devotees, not that many devotees. But Gurudev, he was, he was thinking in this way. He was, he told us, I am always repenting. He used the word repenting. That... I have so many luxuries. And there was not much luxury. <laughs> Guru Dave's bed was just a cotton, you know, like a futon. And, but he considered so many luxuries. I'm always repenting. So much nice foods and this and that. Uh, I, cannot, I cannot follow the example of the Goswamis. He was telling that. And of course, he's the top Goswami, but he's feeling this way. So he's saying to us, our whole time goes in vain. Certainly, this is a situation of great distress. Mm -hmm. One thing Gurudev also said in that regard is that if we don't do bhajan, uh, at the end of our life, it will be the cause of great lamentation Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Yes, that's, you know, that, uh, that song by Bhakti Vinod Thakur. Um, <clears throat> does it begin again? I don't know. About uh, how Mahaprabhu is rising in the morning. Uh, Aruna. Udilo Aruna. Udilo, yes. Udilo Aruna Purvapagi. Trijamani Gaura Amani Jage. So this wonderful song by Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur is describing the pastime of Mahaprabhu, how he's uh, rising in the morning when the reddish sun comes, a little bit red in the sky. And what does he do? Bhakata Samuha Loyasate Gela Nagara Braja. Now he takes his Bhaktas and goes from village to village. Tatai tatai bhajala ko, ghana ghana tahi janjera ro, preme dhala dhala sonara anga, charani nupura bhaji. Yes, so Mahaprabhu is dancing in the kirtan and the sound of his footbells are jingling. Tatai tatai, mm -hmm. the murdanga is sounding. Ghana ghana. The, the whoppers, we call them. Mm -hmm. Gana Gana. Janjera. Janjara. Roll. Making these sound. Preme Dhala Dhala. Sonar Anga. Preme Dhala Dhala means that Mahaprabhu's body is somewhat shivering in crane. Uh, and swaying back and forth, dala dala, preme dala dala, sonar anga, his golden form. Charane nupura bhaji, his nupuras, his foot ankle bells are making their sound. Then, Mukunda Madhava Yadava Hari. Bolare Bolare Vadana Bole. Mukunda. So Ma Mahaprabhu is, is calling out. Mukunda, Madhava, Yadava, Hari. 
Bolore, bolore, vadana bori. So he's telling all the people in the village, fill your mouths with this vibration of the names of Mukunda, Madhava, Yadava, Hari. Bolore, bolore, vadana bori. Meche nida vashe, gelore rati, divasa shari rasadi. So this is the preaching that Mahaprabhu is doing. Can you open up the book to that, uh, one of the song books to that um, song? It starts with Udilo, Udilo Adana. Yeah. 116. <clears throat> Udilo Adana. 116. Yeah, give it. I haven't sung this song for quite a while. <coughs> so now, there's a few verses here, which is based upon the comment that you made, how people will have to lament. Right? So now, he says, Mukunda Madhava Yadava Hari Everyone chant, everyone chant, filling your mouths with the holy names of the Lord. And then he says, Miche nida vashe gelore rati divasa shari rashaje. Uh, oh, you pass your nights in vain, captivated in sleep, and your days in decorating your body. Shari rashaje, decorating the body. Emona durla bamana Paya ki koro bhavana keho. Don't any of you think about what you are doing, having achieved this rare human body? Don't you contemplate this? Ebe na bhajile yashodashuta charane puri vilaje. Now, huh? If you do not worship the son of Yashoda now, then you will fall into a shameful condition at the time of death. This is Mahaprabhu telling us. Yes. Charane Puri Vilaje. He goes on. Udita tapana hoile asta. Dingelo bole hoibe biasta. With every rising and setting of the sun, you are busy counting the passing days. Dinge lo bole hoi be biasta. Tabe keno ebe alasahari. Why then do you still remain idle? Alas, you still remain idle. Na baja ridoya raje. Ridoya raje means what? The king, the emperor of your heart, Hridoya Raj. Raj means king. So, and you, why do you not worship the Lord of the heart? Well, why do you remain idle? Every rising and setting of the sun, one more day is lost. Then he says, Jivana Anitya, Janaha Sar. Know this essential fact. What is that? Material life is temporary. Jivana anitya. It's anitya. It's temporary. Tahi nana vidha vipada bar. Along with that essential truth, there's another essential truth. Material life is temporary. And it's filled with various troubles and burdens. Know this to be the fact. So, Nam Ashraya Kodi Jatane Tume. Earnestly take shelter of the holy name. Nam Ashraya. Jatane. Make very strong effort to take shelter of the holy name. And Takaha. Takaho apanakaje, it means 
And as you're doing this in your life, all right, you remain engaged in your occupational duties. Kajam means some work. Takaha apan kajam. Whatever you're doing, that's your work. You, you do that. But main thing is, nam ashraya. Take shelter of nam. Then he says, Bhaktivinoda Thakur ends his song with these final two verses. He says, and this is very beautiful verses, these last two verses. <clears throat> Krishna Nam Sudha Koryapan Jarao Bhakati Vinod Pran. Drink the pure nectar of Krishna Nam and thus give relief to Bhaktivinoda's burning heart. Mm-hmm. By you drinking that nectar, Bhaktivinoda will be relieved because his heart is burning in sorrow it's to see how we are not doing that and not and we're wasting our life. So then he says, Nam bina kichu na hikoar choda bhuvana maje. There is nothing, nothing except the holy name within all the 14 worlds. Mm-hmm. Isn't that amazing? There is nothing. He says, Nam vina kichu na hiko ar. That means there is nothing else except Nam. Choda bhuvana maje in the entire Choda bhuvan means the 14 planetary systems. Mm-hmm. And he ends the song by saying, Jivar Kalyana Sadhana Kam Jagati Asi E Madhur Nam. So, desiring to benefit the living entities, these sweet holy names have come to the material world. Jivar Kalyana Sadhana Kam. The holy name himself has this desire, this Sadhana Kam is this desire to give kalyana, auspiciousness to the jivas. Hmm? Jagati asi e madhuranam. Jagati asi means coming into this jagat, into this material universe, madhuranam, the sweet name. With this desire to benefit all the jivas, Sri Nam himself has entered into this universe. Then he says, avidya timira Tapana rupe, prit gagani viraje. He says, they shine like the sun in the sky of the heart. They means all the different holy names. They are shining, avidya timira, and destroying the darkness of ignorance. Huh? Avidya timira tapana rupe. So now those names are situated like the sun is situated in the sky of the universe and those names are situated within the heart and they're dissipating all the darkness of ignorance. So these are, these are Mahaprabhu's own words huh? and Bhaktivedanta Thakur's own words of what we should be doing with our human form of life. Hmm? How the human form of life is durlava. It is, it is not very often <laughs> that one gets the human birth as, as a fallen jiva in this material universe. It is very rare, actually. It is very rare to get a human birth. We see how there's 8,400,000 species So, 400,000 are human, but only half of them are even civilized. And that's the statement of Mahaprabhu to Rupa Goswami. And then even amongst those that are civilized, means that they have connection with Vedic civilization. Most of the persons who are following that, they're called Dharma Dvajis. Dvaji means like flag. Uh, Dharma Dvajis means they're outwardly posing as religious persons and all that. Mm-hmm. 
but it's quite superficial, their so-called dharma. That's why at the end of the Gita, after hearing everything, Krishna is telling Arjuna, abandon all these other dharmas, just surrender to me. That's, that's your sanatan dharma. You know? So, in this way, yeah, I remember when we would start our Govardhan Parikrama during the Kartik month, we would come out onto the, onto the road, onto the Parikrama path with hundreds of devotees and Gurudev would walk with us some short distance in the very beginning of the morning and we were going to do our whole Govardhan Parikrama and then Krishna Das Prabhu would chant this song. Udilo Arna Bhurava Bhade. Yeah. Very, very memorable. In Mahaprabhu's Samkirtan song. Mm-hmm. <coughs> now, this next section is called They Can Give. Radha's mercy. Who would he be talking about here? The pure devotee. <laughs> yes. So here, Kripam Budhir Ya. He's quoting another couple of words from the verse uh, written by Raghunath Das, glorifying Sanatan Goswami. He's calling Kripam Budhir Ya. That means Sanatan Goswami is Kripa Samudra. He is a great ocean of mercy. And the highest extent of mercy, because there's different levels of mercy. Well, he is the highest extent of mercy. He can also give Radha's mercy. He can give that. He can pray O Srimati Radhika, you should give your mercy to this devotee. Now Gurudev is referring to Lalita Devi, that Lalita Devi can also give this. We can pray to her. And he's quoting the seventh verse from the Lalita Ashtakam. (coughs) Yam kam api vrajakule vrishabhanu jaya Prekshya svapaksha padavim anurudya mana sadhyas tad ishtakatanena pritartayantim devim gunai sulalitam lalitam namami. So here's a description in this Lalita Ashtakam written by Rupa Goswami. He's telling Lalita Devi upon seeing any young girl anywhere in Braja, and she sees that that young girl is inclined toward Vrishabhana Nandini. Then Lalita at once fulfills all of that young girl's internal desires and makes her life successful. I offer obeisances unto Lalita Devi, who is a repository of charming qualities. So in that Lalita Ashtakam, this is a very important verse for us because she, there's practically there's no one closer to Srimati Radhika than Lalita Devi. Her other name is Anuradha. Anuradha is the name of Lalita Devi. She's like Radha herself, practically. And she has this ability to suggest to Radhika that you should accept this girl here. She's very inclined toward you. So Gurudev is saying in the same way, Sanatan Goswami, he has, he is able to give the highest extent of mercy. He can also give Radha's mercy. And he can pray, oh, Shimati Radhika, you should give your mercy to this devotee. We need agents like that. So now, if Lalita hears that any Kishari gopi in Vraj wants to be a Palyadasi of Srimati Radhika, she at once fulfills the desires of that gopi. If anyone, anywhere, 
has in his sadak sharir a desire that I only want to be a Pali of Radhika. And if he prays to her, I want to be a Pali of Radhika. This is so high, but I want it. O Lalita, O Lalite, you should be merciful to me so that I may have that service. So she will manage to do this at once. This is the mood of the shloka. Lalita will ask any Kishori moving within Braj, O oh, Kishori, where are you going? And the young girl may reply, I'm going to Varshana for, or Yavat, or Radhakunda. That's in parentheses. But she's telling, I'm going to Varshana. Why are you going there, Kishori? Lalita asks that girl. She answers, I know it is very difficult to achieve, but I am going there with the hope that Srimati Radhika may keep me as her Paliyadasi. When Lalita knows this, she at once tries to give that bhav. She will order, not pray, to Radhika, keep this girl as your Paliyadasi. She can order to Radhika. I am writing her name in the register of your Paliyadasis. Yeah. And Srimati Radhika cannot disobey. She is bound to obey the order of Lalita. If Lalita sees any sign at all that one wants to become a Paliyadasi, she certainly arranges for it. At once, she tells Radhika, and Radhika obeys her order. This is Kripam Budhir, meaning ocean of mercy. And there is no Kripa beyond this. Raghunath Das Goswami therefore says, Kripam Budhir Ya, that Sri Sanatan Goswami as Lavanga Manjari is an ocean of mercy because he can distribute the Kripa of Srimati Radhika. Paradukaduki. Paradukaduki is the next words in that line. Kripam Budhirya Paradukaduki. Sanatan Goswami is always unhappy. The word duki means sorrowful. Right? Sanatan Goswami is always unhappy to see the unhappiness of any jiva. No jiva uh, is saying to him, please have mercy upon me. Rather, he sees that they are vessels for mercy, even though they don't want it. This is Sanatana Goswami. He will go to a person and request, can you give me water to drink? Why is he asking for water? Why is Sanatana Goswami asking this person for water? Huh? He wants to give him his mercy. He is creating their Sukriti. He therefore travels to every village contacting the sense enjoyers. And then in the Grihasta's home he questions, I have heard that your daughter is soon to be married. He makes conversation, Sanatana Goswami. Then the Grihasta may reply, her marriage has already been performed. Oh, how is she? And although he has no self-interest, Sanatana Goswami will listen to all the news of the villagers. What is the, what is the need? He wants to give them bhakti. What is the need of his listening to the villagers? Because he wants to give them bhakti by his association, somehow or other, he will instruct someone, oh, your father is very ill, try to chant Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, and he will improve. <laughs> In any way, he, any way that he can, Sanatana Goswami gives his mercy. This is the symptom of para dukkha dukkhi. He has nothing 
to be gained for himself and he is unhappy to see the unhappiness of others. We can just imagine Srila Prabhupada. Huh? So, so much mercy, you know, when he saw the people. Uh, he had already met Westerners in India, but now when he first arrived in Boston Harbor, first time he came off the ship and saw. That's when he came back to the ship and wrote that prayer. Uh, that all, I, I don't know why you have brought me here, Krishna, but you must have some purpose. But I can see that all the population here, they're all covered very heavily by the modes of ignorance and passion. And I don't I don't know how they will be able to understand your message, this message of Srimad Bhagavatam. And then he began to pray and pray for Krishna's mercy, for Krishna's empowerment and making it possible for them to become purified. Yeah. And it happened. Because the pure devotee was feeling so much distress upon seeing the suffering of, of others. Didn't, hmm. <clears throat> didn't Shri Prabhupada write something, but by hearing your message? Oh yes, it's a long prayer. We went through the whole prayer one day in a class. Um, yeah, he actually quoted uh, the Srimad Bhagavatam. Five verses, yes, yes. starting with Srinivatam Svapata Krishna, yes. you see. And um, he's outlining there, my dear Lord, you yourself have stated this in the Srimad Bhagavatam, mm -hmm. that if a person will hear mm -hmm. your message, Srinivatam Svapata Krishna, then everything will gradually start to take place because Krishna will help. Uh, Krishna, situated in the heart, seeing that this person is hearing about me, he will now begin to cleanse the heart from all the inauspicious things, the Abhadras. And then from there, step by step, gradually, uh, he will attain pure bhakti, shuddha bhakti. So, yeah, so Srila Prabhupada, that was a very earnest prayer that he wrote there. And really he was praying for all of us because when he arrived, we were, we were there. We were there in that land. But we didn't know that he had arrived and he didn't... He hadn't met us yet personally, but Krishna was making the arrangement. Also, also, how much faith Prabhupada had yes. in, in the Bhagavatam and the Holy Name. Actually, he said that at the end of that prayer. Yes. At the end of the prayer. He says, Bhakti Noi, I don't have any Bhakti. Veda Noi, I don't have any knowledge, great knowledge. But hmm. nam dharo kori, something. I have very firm belief hmm. in nam. Hmm. Hmm. So it requires a personality like that to come and to shower mercy on the conditioned souls. So, yeah. So I'm just finishing the end of this. Uh, Purport. So, Sanatanastam Prabhum Ashrayami. Raghunath Das Goswami is addressing Sanatan Goswami as Prabhu, capital P. Who is Prabhu? Goranga is Mahaprabhu. And Nityananda and Advaita Charyas are both Prabhus, with capital P. A Prabhu is one who can give anything to any person. That's a Prabhu. He should be master of all things. I may ask you, I may ask you, 
I want a son. Please give me a son. Can you fulfill my request? So Gurudev is telling to the devotees who are with him in the room, and he's giving this class, he's saying, he say, I may ask you, I want a son. Huh? Please give me a son. Can you fulfill my request? No, you cannot. But if I request you, give me five rupees, you can give that. What you have, you can give. You cannot give what you don't have. But because Sanatan Goswami can give it anything we may desire, Raghunath Das Goswami has addressed him as Prabhu. He says, O oh, Prabhu, you have something in your treasury which you can supply to me. Please give me Radha Pada Dasya. You are the master of that. Prabhu Ashrayami, I am taking shelter of your lotus feet. So the question is raised that we hear that Raghunath Das Goswami prays to Sri Rupa Manjari. We hear that Raghunath Das Goswami prays to Sri Rupa Manjari, but he does not pray to Lavanga Manjari in the same way. So Rupa Manjari is Rupa Goswami, Lavanga Manjari is Sanatan Goswami. So we're hearing that Raghunath Das Goswami prays to Rupa Manjari, but he does not pray to Lavanga Manjari in the same way. He has not prayed here, but he knows Sanatan is Lavanga Manjari. Raghunath Das Goswami knows. Huh? He can pray, but not everything can be written. In his mind, he always prays. He has prayed to all the Sakis. He has prayed even to Shaibya, Padma, and Chandravali. What to speak of Lavanga Manjari? He has prayed to Saki Stali, though he should not. So you know who Saki Stali is? We were reading that during our uh, Kartik. We were reading the Parikrama book, and we were reading about the Govardhan Parikrama. And there's a place not far from Radha Kunda, which is called Saki Stali. So th that's the place of who? Chandra. Yes, of Chandravali. That's her place, her village, Saki Stali. Mm -hmm. So there's a pastime that happened. <clears throat> he, so a man once brought buttermilk from there, from Saki Stali. You know, like in, in Braj, they have what they call buttermilk, but it's actually chaj. It's called chaj. And what it is, is that when they churn yogurt and make yogurt into butter, there's a runoff of a milky substance, which is a little, little bit sour, and that's called chaj. So in Braj, practically you can go into any house and say, can you give me some chaj? And they have that, because they're, these are cowherding villages, you know. <clears throat> so they have butter, they have chaj. And whenever we would um, come to a certain village during the parikrama, the organizers of our parikrama would make an advance arrangement that a few, a few hundred devotees can be fed with freshly cooked rotis in their, in their brick oven that they make. They make a small brick oven in every single house in Braj. And, uh, yeah, and then there's an opening and uh, on the top of that brick oven. And what they do is they sit next to it and with their hands, you know, they're making the, they're making the dough into rotis. They don't even use a rolling pin, actually. Yeah, they, they do it, they do it like back and forth. I guess it's something similar to tossing the pizza dough and <laughs> like that. It kind of expands it, you know. I guess maybe you never had that chance to to like go into one of the village homes and 
have them make for you directly on the fire traditional, traditional rotis. The rotis are generally made with, uh, mm, I'm trying to remember, you can look it up, but it's not all wheat. There's also some, I think, maybe some, could be barley flour or some, something mixed is there. Mm -hmm. But it's very, very, you know, nourishing and hearty. Mm -hmm. And they're kind of a little bit thick. And they put fresh butter on that. Mm -hmm. And then they serve you that with a cup of chaj. Mm -hmm. That's a bridge basi breakfast, you know. Mm -hmm. And they live on they live on rotis. I mean, they eat rotis morning, then at noontime they take a little dal. It's very simple, little dal, little sabji, and roti, you know, like that. But so tasteful how they cook. Yes. So. So here is the case where Gurudev has explained that Raghunath Das Goswami prays to Rupa Manjari, but he does not pray to Lavanga Manjari in the same way. He has not prayed like that here, but he knows that Sanatan is Lavanga Manjari. He can pray, but not everything can be written. So in his mind, he always prays. He has prayed to all the Sakis. He has prayed even to Shaibya, Padma, and Chandravali. Those are in the opposing camp. So what to speak of Lavanga Manjari, right? So he has prayed even to Saki Stali, although he should not, <laughs> Gurudev is saying. So a man once brought buttermilk from there, from that village, Saki Stali, and he became very furious, uh, Raghunath Das Goswami, because in that village there was... Um, a kind of large leaf that grew on a particular type of tree there, and they made a leaf cup. And so the leaf cup was quite more big than the general leaf cups that they would have where people would bring anything to Raghunath Das Goswami. And so he asked the person, where did you get this large leaf leaf cup? He says, oh, I got it in the village, Saki Stali. And then Raghunath Das Goswami, ooh, he became very furious uh, and threw it far away. That's because he was in his internal bobs and moods at the time. Yes. So, but Gurudev is pointing out that he has also prayed to Saki Stali. He has a, what's it called again? Raja, forgetting the title. Um, he's uh, Raghunath Das wrote a, a, a book that has something like 250 verses and he's praying to every single living entity in Braj including the insects he's seeing the actual Dham and he's praying in that book so then uh, a man once brought buttermilk from Saki Stali and he became very furious but yet he prayed to Saki Stali <sighs> he has also offered pranam to Jatila and Kutila in that same book if Jatila and Kutila were not there there would be no Ras <laughs> they play a very essential role and it must be that, that he also prays to Lavanga Manjari, but not everything can be given. Not everything can be given. In Srimad Bhagavatam, we see the same thing. Only one, one day's ras, rasa dance, one day rasa dance has been described, and only eight days' association of Uddhava has been given. It is stated that Uddhava stayed in Vrindavan for six or ten months. But what took place and what conversations transpired have not been written. So we should always remember all these topics 
as well as the pastimes of Krishna, not for others, but with a wish to have a relationship. So that's Gurudev's commentary on this sixth verse. And so uh, Raghunath Das Goswami, he had such gratitude to Sri Sanatana Goswami because he admitted in his prayer to him that you were so much of an ocean of mercy and paradukaduki, you had so much pity and suffering in your own heart to see the sufferings of others. This is your nature, Sanatana Goswami. And therefore, you saw me in my condition and you forced me to drink the nectar of renunciation, bhakti yug, uh, bhakti rasam prayatnaya, vairagya yug, bhakti rasam prayatnaya, mixed with vairagya. So Srila Raghunath Das Goswami tomorrow will read that seventh verse. And then from that point, then he will actually be directly expressing his prayers to Srimati Radharani. The whole book is him praying in utter separation mode for service to the lotus feet of Srimati Radharani, Radha Dasyam, that he can become, he can become absorbed eternally in serving her lotus feet. So such a sweet book as this, Srivilapa Kushamanjali, will continue to hear all of this nectar. Maybe we'll see maybe some little drop might just suddenly fly on our heads <laughs> as we're reading this. <laughs> That's all we can hope for. Gaur Pranamani Srila Raghunath Das Goswami Pada Ki Jai Srila Sanatan Goswami Pada Ki Jai Srila Rupa Goswami Pada Ki Jai Gaur Parshat Vrinda Ki Jai Sri Lalita Devi Ki Jai Jai Sri Swarup Damodar Goswami Pada Ki Jai Ananta Koti Vaishnava Vrinda Ki Jai Samagata Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Ki Jai Nitai Gaur Premanani <coughs> Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama.
Brindai Tulsi de Bhai Priyai Keshava Sitra Krishna Bhakti Pradi Devi Satyavachaina Mohanama Vansha Kalpadrupyascha Kripa Sindhu Vegaja Patitanam Pavanebhyo Vaishave Brinamohanama Thank you. Thank you.